Scared? Welcome to this Periscope, my friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Gary McLaughlin. I'm at Let's Get You Free, and welcome to this Periscope broadcast. Thank you for all my replay viewers for tuning in. And you can share this scope out with your friends. You can swipe right for iOS and swipe up for Android. Make sure that you're following me by tapping that little man icon at uh, Let's Get You Free. And you can get my free online marketing boot camp at successwithgare.com. Miss Nicole Hawk, how are you, my dear? And you can follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash meetgare. So, I am going to just put this over. Good morning. I was just doing a, a scope this morning um, with uh, the 8 Figure Mastermind team account. And uh, if you missed that, you should go and check out the replay where I talked about 8 steps to creating a growth plan for 2016. Good morning, my friend. How are you? How is it over in, uh, you're in Iraq, right? Um, you're, I forget where you're at. Um, but I actually just did a, a, a scope. Yep, that's right, yeah. I'm doing well, my friend, and uh, I am just shooting here from Toronto, Canada. My name, again, is Gary McLaughlin. Some call me the Farming Ninja, because I grew up on a farm, wanted to be a ninja. And I'm going to be talking today about seven mental shifts to success. Seven mental shifts to success. And uh, I was on the Eight Figure Mastermind team. I'm one of the Eight Figure Mastermind leaders, and um, I did on the team account there because Saturdays is the day that I I manage the team helm. And uh, we were talking about eight steps to creating a growth plan for 2016. And we're at a you know you know at the tail end of a year, and um, you know there's only a few weeks left. And uh, good morning, always good to see you. Always good to see you, and thank you very much for all those hearts as well, too. It's always a pleasure to see your smiling face as well, too. So, best smile ever on the picture. So, and, you know, this morning we are talking on the team account about those shifts. It's the date on your t-shirt. It's my birthday year. Nice! 1994. Sweet! It was a good year. It was a good year. I was born in the 70s, so, you know, I was like a 72 baby. So, you know, getting up there in years. But I, I want to, to um, you know, just talk about, you know, the shifts that we have to make from going from one year to an, then the next. And sometimes, you know, success is hard work. Success is something that is a progressive realization of a worthwhile uh, dream. I'm 1981, baby. Woo, woo, woo. Nice, buddy. Nice. The 80s were awesome as well, too. You know, I um, I always loved the 80s. I was growing up as a teenager and then. Yep. So, here's the thing. So, this morning we're going to be talking about seven mental shifts. And this sort of ties in there. December 1897 to... Nice! Yeah, it was March... In March uh, 1972 as well. So, we have the same birth year, Nicole. That's awesome. We're the same age. Exact same age. It's really awesome. I mean, I don't know where time flies. It, it just seems to, you know, go like that. And, you know, the thing is that when you make a, a, a decision, and decisions are like muscles, these are things that, you know, can really propel us into a new course in life. And, you know, one of the greatest gifts of life is that we have the ability to have free will and, you know, make decisions on our own. And decisions that we want to, you know, better our life or you know, to, to make it worse as well, too. So there's got to be some sort of mental shift. And for years, I've been studying, you know, personal development. I'll be 43 next week. Happy birthday. Like, it must be good, you know, having a birthday right around Christmas because you get lots of presents. <laughs> you get presents for your birthday and you get presents for Christmas. Nice, right? And, you know, this is the thing is that very welcome. And this is the thing that um, when you make those shifts in your life, um, you know, as we grow, when we learn to grow, <laughs> little yup. And the thing is that when we grow and we actually focus on, you know, being the best version of ourselves and every day we're making every day a masterpiece. I, um, I've been listening, I was listening to a book last week and it was called Today Matters by John C. Maxwell. And he talks about, you know, the power of the decisions that we make today and it's choices, chances, and changes. The choices that we make, the chances that we take, and the changes that we make on a daily basis. And it's about making each day a masterpiece. And these days, making a day, each day count, not only with the people that you love by giving your kids an extra hug, you know, every day, 
wake up, I give my kids a hug, tell them I love them, I give my wife a hug, tell her I love her. And, you know, try and make the best out of everything you can because you never know when's your last day going to be. And if you're not trying to make every day a masterpiece and we're wasting time, that's a big deal because, I mean, you can waste a whole lot of money and you can just make more, which is not too bad. For most people, it's difficult, to, you know, it's difficult to do. But if you waste time, you can't make more time, right? So to make sure that you have a shift in your success, one of the things that, one of the key points is remember that age is just a number. Age is all in how you feel, right? Live every day like it's your last. That's right. Give people, you know, is it the name of the book is, the name of the book that John C. Maxwell uh, did was Today Matters. If you hit me up, my friend, on Facebook, I'll get you the audio, okay? I'll hook you up with the audio because I think it's that powerful and I think it's that powerful that more people should listen to it as well too. I've, I've listened to it a few times, but just hit me up on Facebook. Just message me and say, hey, it's me from Periscope and I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. Um, but here's the thing. Age is just a number deal. Age is just a deal. John, Today Matters by John C. Maxwell. One of the most powerful things that you can listen to. And it's something I, I suggest you listen to like 10 times. But age is just a number. You know, Nicole and I are 43. Um, but you know what? I bet you we don't feel, you know, what our age is. Because, again, it's that attitude, that attitude of gratitude, of being appreciative for what you have, rather than not thinking about the things that you don't have. And understanding that, you know, I've, I've ran in many times where um, so many people tell me, young whisper snappers, young whipper snappers. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. But there's there's so many people that, that um, you know, say, well, I can't do that because I'm too old. Or I can't, you can't teach an old dog a new trick. How many times have you ever heard that? I mean, that's BS. Is that... Listen, I tell my kids, you're never going to stop learning. You know, I want them to get into reading. I want them to understand, to practice a daily discipline that's going to help them continue. I call it lifelong learning. Be the best version of you that you can be. And focus on the five Fs of your life. Your faith, family, friends, fitness, and finances. And make sure that you understand that age is just a number. You're never too, under there, billions time. You want to learn anything you want. That's right. It's, it's hyper learning. We can control our influences. So, you know, it, when you understand that and the older you get, if you can control more of your disciplines, you can actually assimilate information way faster than any child. It's, it's a myth that kids actually assemble things faster. It's just that a lot of times when, you know, you're a parent, you're seeing your kid picking up languages and stuff like that. But many people are caught up in this drone state of lifetime. It's like day in, day out. I don't know if you've ever seen that commercial where like, it was the Dunkin' Donuts. The guy was waking up every morning and was like, Time to make the donuts. Time to make the donuts. And then, you know, it was just like a continuous wheel of things like that. Understand that if you work to better yourself, better things can come to you. And number two is reinvest in yourself. Reinvest in you. Reinvest in who you are. And that means by, you know, getting around other influential people. You know, I was talking about in our eight-figure mastermind this morning about creating a growth plan for 2016. And, you know, part of my growth plan is going out to some big conferences, getting around some of my mentors, um, you know, stretching myself and getting around the people that I really wanted to be out there. Two Balikaman joined. Great to see you. And then number three which is avoid decision f uh, fatigue. Avoid decision fatigue. Don't be indecisive of what you want to do. Make a decision and stick to it. And if the outcome isn't, you know, the desired outcome or what you expect or it's, you know, it's, it's working in a wrong direction, just make a new decision and stick to that and then adjust yourself as well too. Because indecisiveness, guess what it does? It leads to inaction. <laughs> And inaction doesn't do anything. It helps us manifest more fear and stuff like that, right? So, to avoid that, we have to make decisions. Decisions are like muscles. The more we make, the stronger we get. And when we make, you know, big decisions based on what's important and they match our values in our life, then big things and big shifts can happen into our life as well, too. 
the shift has got to happen up here and you've got to start making decisions because not trying something is a sense of failure. I always tell people is the pain of moving forward less than the pain of moving backwards? Is the pain of moving forward less than the pain of moving backwards? Which means that it's going to be painful sometimes making new changes but it's less than actually going backwards and saying I'm going to do the same thing I've always done and feeling the same way I've always felt. If you want to feel better you got to make new decisions and indecisiveness is something that plagues us all because it leads to procrastination. So in order to do that you have to make a decision. And number four, here's a, here's a kicker, like Russian girls, yes. Uh, it's funny. I'm not even going to fall into that one because I don't even know where that's going. But uh, here's number four. You have to build a resilient mind. Build a resilient mind. And what that means is that there's going to be people out there that are going to want to make you part of their plan or direct you in any way. And you'll either become a part of theirs or you can actually create your own. Is that you've got to carve your own path. Many people get caught up in the path of others. And... You know, if, you, if you've got big aspirations, if you want to be able to project a business forward, then you've got to be able to build a residual, resilient mind. A resilient mind is just a way to be able to say, listen, I'm not going to worry about what, you know, the people out there that do not agree with me think. I'm going to worry about the people that do agree with me and how they think and how I am leading them. And because it's like when you're shooting a video, a lot of people get really, really scared at shooting videos. I did, you know, when I started doing it like eight years ago, it was like doing fitness videos and stuff like that. It would take days to produce them. And, you know, it, after I'd put it up, only one or two people would see it. And I was like, I was so worried about all the people that would make fun of me and what they would think, rather than just focusing on what the value was in the video for the people that it really mattered. Because after all, it only mattered to the people that were watching. It only mattered to the people that we're participating in, that we're actually engaging with this. Because that's where the message can, you know, be helpful. And, you know, that's a big thing. How many pages do you have on Facebook? I was just searching for you. Oh, my page is facebook.com slash farming ninja. Farming ninja. It's all one word, farming ninja, because I grew up on a farm wanting to be a ninja. So facebook.com slash farming ninja is my page. And if you want to get my profile, it's Meat Gear. I'll put up a graphic here so you can see it here shortly. So, we, you know, that's the thing is we have to, I have a lot of pages, but we have to have a resilient mind to what we're doing. And we have to, number five, which is think big picture. Be big. And you want to think about the big picture, what you're trying to do. You're welcome, my dear. You want to think big about what you're, you're doing. And you want to be big, you know. You gotta you gotta plan for your big picture. You know, 2016 is coming up. How do you want that year to end? And you are the artist. You can create the canvas. You can create the picture. You know, for the next year by laying out the plan and following it, and being resilient to negative forces, being able to identify the, th the things that you want to accomplish in your business. The number six, <coughs> which is be methodical, and. Oftentimes, well, I study a lot of successful people because I really want to emulate some of these qualities. You know, same thing that I want to do with my faith. I emulate the people we want to do that. We are our own creators. Absolutely, John. And, you know, that is a great point, is that we are the creators of our own life. We have the freedom to make our own decisions, and we also have the freedom to control our influences. A lot of us are being controlled by, you know, media and things like that. We don't realize it, but we're in a car. We're driving along for like three, four hours a day sometimes. And you know what I did about ten years ago is I started making that time, that commuting time, my classroom. It was audiobooks. It was listening to uh, tapes. It was listening to anything that I could get my hands on, shutting off the radio and realizing that I can control my influences. And if I can control my influences, I control my mind. And if I control my mind, I can actually can control the outcome of what I do. And one of the things that it helps me control is my discipline. My discipline to be methodical. Be methodical and control the daily action plan that I'm going to take. Each and every day, even if I'm, you know, you know, not feeling it, I got to do it, you know. And that's the thing, is that when you do that, it's so true, right? And, you know, when you control 
you you know what you have control of. And it's a big thing because it also controls on how your children perceive things, how your your family perceives things. Happier families are people that are controlling their influences and focusing on the right things. Um, we live in a uh, a society that is completely ADD, um, you know, driven. Just like you know, people want to be healthy, yet the problem is that you know it's cheaper to to eat unhealthy, like going to you know some of these restaurants. But these restaurants are you know starting to to wise up to this. But we have to make decisions to create healthy lifestyles, to create positive environments in our life. And if we're not, if we're just you know we're falling trapped back to the same people that we know that are just not you know working for us, it's doing that. ADD society. It has been said, and I was reading this in a blog post, it's been said the average person on Facebook has an attention span of I'm from Iraq, I'm a friend, he told me about you. Awesome, great to have you. It's been said on social media that people have an attention span of about four seconds. And goldfish, get this, goldfish have attention spans of about eight seconds. So we are now de-evolved to having less of an attention span. So, you know, that's a big thing. Yeah, you can say hi. My son just wants to say hi real quick. Say hi. Hi. This is my boy, and this is Tristan. You know, one of my big reasons why I do what I do, because I've been a full-time father to him, and, uh, you know, him and I get to do a lot of stuff, and my daughter as well, too. But you know what? Having children changed my life and After allowed me. A pair, I don't think you play with me. Yeah, four seconds. They sorry, said, you calling me a goldfish? They, play Xbox. they said hi, cutie. No, I'm not calling you a goldfish. No. Yes, you can play some Xbox. And um, yes, yeah. So you know, the last one here, which is really, really important of the seven mental shifts to success, is you got to believe in yourself. Belief is something that. Um, the only way to build it is to practice it. And the only way to practice it is to master your habits. Um, a lot of us have realized that we, you know, we've got bad habits. And the only way to break, break bad habits is to create new habits that do that. And we realize that we can learn habits, we can also unlearn them, right? And the thing is, when you can master your habits, you normally, I'm a Thorpe, it's normal that human, t this is eight seconds, whoever that is decreased, yes, it is. I know you're a therapist, I mean, you're an amazing one as well, too. And it, it, that, is a, that is so true. It's, de it's decreased because people are overstimulated. Your mind is making th tens of thousands of decisions each and every day. What to watch, where to go, what to do next. Um, you know, so our mind is a really powerful thing, typo, it's okay. But, you know, that's the thing, is that to build belief, you have to build in your habits. Anytime, my dear. Anytime. It's always a pleasure having you here. And when you build belief in yourself, belief then trickles outwards. I've talked about this in my other scopes. It's about perception projection. How you perceive the world is what you're projecting outwards. And what you're attracting back to you. So if you're in a business, and this is a basic concept of attraction marketing, you're so sweet. Belief. It's the only way belief is creating your habits, which creators your belief of love. This is, this is you just said, yes. And your belief is love. You always have to love what you do and who you are. How hard is it to find work in Canada? Eh, I mean, it's like any place. Listen, the thing is with, you know, I, I left the corporate scene when I was 36, 37. I walked away. And uh, it was a time in my life where my kids were babies. And it was a powerful decision that projected me on an entirely new plan. Like, I was, I was chasing after titles. Like, it was gonna, I was trying to be a president and a CEO of a company. But when I started looking at the landscape that these guys were working 70, 80 hour weeks, and I was doing the same thing, I was trading all this time, I realized that there's got to be better things. And when I had my kids, I realized that there was much more to life than I ever, ever thought or ever imagined. And all I wanted to do was be a participant in their life. Thankfully, because of that decision, I found, you know, different ways to be able to produce income for myself. Produce income that, you know, allowed me to be free, to be, free, to be you know, uh, to be set up so that I don't need to have that security of that job. I wasn't defined by a title anymore. I was defined by a purpose. 
And when you understand that, um, it's a big thing because somebody asked me, and this is what, what my turning point was. Someone asked me, they said, tell me who you are without telling me what you do. And I honestly couldn't tell them. I didn't know what I was all about. And now, you know, that has entirely changed. So when you believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing, big shifts can happen to you. And to answer your questions, you know, it's not hard to find a job in Canada, but, you know, it, it's not, it's not the way I think that, I mean, for some people that's what they need. Um, but it's not necessarily the way that's going to get you, you know, what it is. Uh, when I was in, in work and trading all that time for money, I realized that there was insecurity. Like here in Canada, like in the States, there was always the fear of somebody's going to replace me. The higher I got, the more competition there was, the more demanding it was on my education. To get into the highest levels, I had to spend another hundred grand to get a, an MBA. I had to... I was going to have to spend two years of my life to get that. And the average salary increase was going to be an extra 100 to $200 a week. And the payoff just didn't make sense. So, I apologize, Gary. What's the name of the book again? would like to listen to it on my Amazon Echo. The It's Today Matters by John C. Maxwell. If you, Nicole, if you send me a message, I can hook you up. Okay? I've got three books for you I'm going to give you. And um, I will I will hook you up with that that um, you really like. So, listen, I'm going to recap these for you guys so that you have them. But, again, um, the seven mental shifts to success. And I'm going to just do that. And I'm going to give you a, a thing here so you can see. Connect with me. You can connect with me on Facebook at Facebook.com. Today Matters by John C. Maxwell. And here's the seven mental shifts to success. Remember, age is just a number. Reinvest in yourself and avoid decision fatigue and build a resilient mind. Number five is think big picture and be big. And number six is be methodical. And number seven is to build belief in yourself, okay? So be sure to, again, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in. Thank you very much for all those hearts. I really do appreciate it. Um, you can share this out with your followers as well, too. And you can follow me at Let's Get You Free. And you can get my free boot camp at successwithgare.com. I actually put a whole bunch of downloads. And I teach online marketing. It was one of the ways that I build an income. And I do it through affiliate marketing and building teams. And helping people tap into their true potential. And you can be friends with me at facebook.com slash meetgare. That's my profile. It's my real profile. So... As long as you're not weird, <laughs> you can be friends with me, okay? So, facebook.com slash meetgare. And if you want to become a, a fan of mine on my fan page, it's at facebook.com slash farming ninja. Farming, as in farming, ninja. <laughs> All one word, facebook.com slash farming ninja. So, again, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for tuning in. We are all weird. It's all good, my friend. It's always good to see you, my friend. And thank you, thank you very much for all the love. And thank you for your, you know, your time here this morning. And if you want to catch out the other replay of the eight steps to creating a growth plan for 2016, be sure to jump on that Eight Figure Mastermind uh, scope where I was sharing that. I'm going to be on the Eight Figure Mastermind team channel again today. And um, you know, today we were talking on my channel, The Seven Mental Shifts to Success. Have a blessed and beautiful day. And be sure to hit me up, guys, um, the, on Facebook, and I'll hook you up with those audios. And uh, I really think that it's got a powerful message, and, and it's just going to elate you as well, too. So I appreciate